Norman McCormick here, welcome to the channel. I know, I'm barefaced. I did do a live stream of me doing my beard because it's just so hot outside. Um, we're having a heat wave at the moment. It rains generally all the time, so I decided I was out sh shooting outside and in the studio and I was baking from the heat of my beard. It was like having three blankets on my face. So I decided that for the first time in 11 years, I was going to shave off my beard. And even then, when I did have it shaved off, it was literally one day. And that's pretty much what's happening now. I won't be shaving again. But that's, uh, yeah, you can see that video where I see my face and see how much I look like my younger brother. Uh, but yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. So do I like this look? I wouldn't be a fan, so I will be growing it back. You'll all be delighted to hear. But anyway, in today's video, we're going to look at how you can export a catalog to send to somebody that can then edit that catalog for you. Just do basic edits, send it back to you, and they only have to send back the catalog. And I'm just going to do it using smart previews, and I'm going to show you how that would work. It's based off some of the stuff we saw in the catalog video uh, from about two weeks ago. All right, let's jump in. All right, so here I have just a catalog. All I'm going to do is catalog is export it as a catalog. This will be the catalog that we are going to send to this other person, All right? And then we'll do it. We'll do a test edit and go from there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to export as a catalog, and obviously with this here, what we're going to do is we're just going to export and we're going to include the smart previews and available previews. All right. It can be a good idea if you want to actually build previews for it as well, because then they're ready to go too. And um, so. In this case here, before I do that, I'm actually going to go library previews, build one-to-one uh, -one previews for all. Right. So I click all. You get the when you only got one image selected, you get that build all option. So that will come up and do that here. And what I'll do is I will skip to when this is done. So here we have one-to-one -one previews are built. Okay, so done. So now let's go ahead with that export. And again, I'll pause once that's happening as well, and we come back to it. So I'm going to go. Export as catalog. So this is the catalog that we're potentially sending to somebody. And I'm just going to call this. I just there's loads of job numbers. I'm just going to call this job seven. By way of example, uh, export catalog. And uh, like I said, we want to have whatever previews you have, and we deliberately want to build and include smart previews because they're going to edit from smart previews. So I'm going to export catalog. And I'm going to come back to this one in a second for you, okay? Okay, so they're built, and conveniently in the background while that was happening, we have the catalog here showing up in job seven. So we can see that we have the .lrcat file, the smart previews file, and the LR data file. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat here in a second, and I'm going to open this, and I'm going to move the, the files, and then I'm going to disconnect them, so that it will act as if the files are disconnected. So let me double click on this to open it. Uh, Lightroom is probably going to see these as missing anyway, so I'm just going to check to see if it does see them as missing initially. All right. Okay, so Lightroom is seeing these files, so now I'm going to have to do a little bit of a cheat. Back in a second, I've cheated. I'm just going to move these files to a different drive. You can actually see what I'm going to do is I'm I have the Firefly as my external drive. If I created this folder, what I'm going to do is I'm just copying all of the files. There's actually 128 in the original file here. Um, even though we're only seeing 48, I'm just copying the whole lot across. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to reconnect this on a different drive. And then I'm going to disconnect the drive so that way I don't have access to the image. So I'm just showing you how to do it because that could be useful information for you anyway. So obviously that's going to take a couple of seconds. Normally, normally it says how much you have remaining, but now it's just estimating. So it'll probably start counting 10, 9, 8 by the time it actually gets to it. So the trick we're going to do is we're going to use a thing called update folder location, which I'll show you in a second. And we'll basically say, don't look at the folder on this drive. Here's the same folder on a different drive. Okay, so I'll copy it across. And so I'm just going to make sure that if I go, uh, go to folder in library, so we're actually on the folder. Okay, and I'm going to update folder location here. So you update folder location. And I'm going to go to Firefly, which is the name of that external drive. And oh, well, in theory, uh, date modifies what I want. All right, so choose that one there instead. So now it'll connect it as this one here. So it'll say that it doesn't have these folders, uh, folders at all, and that they're now on this drive here. 
Okay, so the idea here with this is that I want this to be disconnected. So I am going to eject my drive and this will act as the same way as if, uh, you know, the files will be essentially missing. All right, so now we can see here that this icon has shown up and this is the smart preview icon. So now this would be the same as if you had zipped up your catalog files and sent them off to somebody. Now make sure the Lightroom is closed and not opening on the catalog file when you send it off. So there's only the, the main files in there. Now one thing that I don't know for sure is if the helper file uh, shows up there or not. Uh, where are we now? Uh, go to recent folders and job seven. And so these two here shouldn't be basically in the folder. The helper is a new thing for ser for search. I think that remains even after you've uh, exited out. But I haven't tested that yet because it's it's such a new feature. But those two will definitely be not there when you have Lightroom closed. So you need to make sure those are there. And what you're doing is you can zip it up, send that zipped, you know, just so it's all together, and then your person can open. Now this is obviously large enough because um, the large previews are nearly half a gigabyte. The smart previews are tiny in comparison. Okay, so. I can now do some edits and just by way of example, what I can do is I can just go V. Okay, and then just make this all black and white. Okay, so these are all black and white images that are saved in this catalog here. And um, it'll take a little while for the previews to update. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to my original catalog. And then let's say, this person has sent you back just the job catalog. And to demonstrate what that looks like with the job catalog, I can, of course, just uh, delete these. This, you can see the folders are there. So as if I'd only been sent back this job catalog here. So delete those, those are gone. So you'd only be sending literally this smaller file. So now here what I can do is import from another catalog. And so I'm gonna to go to where I have job seven, and this is all that's left. So that would be what the person is sending back. And you click choose. And when you do that, um, so it creates this temporary working catalog to do the import from. So now it's telling me that it wants to import these and it recognizes that we have changed. There's no new photos to bring in, but it recognizes that there are 48 photos changed. So we can replace develop setting and develop settings only. That means you can overwrite stuff. Okay, nothing is your option. In this case, this is what you want to do, right? You want to update any of the metadata and the develop settings. But you have this other option here that you can preserve all settings as a virtual copy. So that way you'll get whatever the person has sent and you'll get the original ones that you had. If you had done work yourself, they would still be saved. Now in this case here, because I've only done a black and white conversion, I'm not gonna bother with this. But you can also choose to show preview and okay so it's saying the preview is not available so um, that is because the files are not connected so i go import because uh, if it thinks they are but that's fine and um, so we're going to import these and what will happen is these images should then become black and white once this is done right we'll get a, a metadata update but we have to wait and see We can see here you got the three dots showing that there's a new preview being generated. We can see that the information has come back in now. These images are all black and white images. Okay, so that means that we have created a new catalog that was essentially sent off, brought back. They were able to edit because they could see the smart previews and do their edit and bring it back. Now they can only do basic stuff. They can't zoom in extremely well or any of that kind of stuff because smart previews are only 25, 60 pixels. So about five megapixel. Um, so you can't really do huge amounts with them, but you can still do general color editing and all that kind of stuff and make selections and all that kind of stuff. So you can bring star ratings and things like that back in. So folks, that is how you would send off a catalog with smart previews to somebody so that they could then edit your files for you on your behalf and then send you back just the catalog file itself. Now, obviously you need to use Dropbox or WeTransfer or some of the other systems to get stuff across to the other person or even send them a disk. Uh, but you will be able to get stuff back and not you need to send all of the originals, which may be excessive like so even a card a 16 gigabyte card is obviously huge to try and send uh, but smart previews are obviously way way smaller you saw there that the smart previews on these were only 33 megabytes you don't need to sell full-size one-to-one previews either i was just showing that you could do that 
All right, folks, hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. Stuff every Tuesday on Lightroom, and I will be doing more bonus content. I just literally haven't had time, and it's been beautiful out. I've been shooting ridiculous amounts as well. So when you shoot ridiculous amounts, you have to edit them, and that, of course, takes time as well. So, folks, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.